Hi, my name is Michael Datesman, and I want to take a moment to thank this community. I work on a project called the Mass Open Cloud. It's a unique effort between academia, industry, nonprofits, and the government. This cloud is used indirectly by tens of thousands of users. It has hundreds of servers. It's used to teach hundreds of students annually, host dozens of projects, as well as continuous integration and deployment for a few open source projects. The Mass Open Cloud, or MOC as we usually call it, exists thanks to the work of this community. And yet, I didn't have anywhere near this much white hair until I tried to manage a team operating an open source cloud. It's hard. Why is that? Well, it's because every open source cloud is different. Each is built on different hardware configurations, unique installation steps, different services, and there's no common set of monitoring and billing capabilities integrated into all the services. It's all unique to each cloud. This means there's no way to encapsulate best practices into the configuration, no easy way to compare information between clouds, and each of us solves the problems we encounter in a different way, largely by ourselves. Moreover, there's no visibility by the open source developers of the software into how that software is actually deployed, operated, or used, which means that the community may be working on problems that the operators just don't care about. And it's really hard for the developers of the software to reproduce or debug it. And this probably helps explain why some of you have white hair too. If you look at the public clouds, they are prescriptive. They have one way of solving everything. They have real visibility into what users are doing and they can evaluate their software with real usage and then evolve things dynamically using continuous integration and deployment. We believe that if open source clouds are going to be successful in the long run, the open source community needs its own cloud. In 2018, we reached out to the OpenStack Foundation to explore our idea, and we thought we were gonna piss them off. But Mark and Jonathan said, yes, finally. And together we launched Open InfoLabs. We got together in real life to talk and plan. We had concrete goals and great clarity on our MVP. And I'm not kidding here. This is a card we wrote that day. It's really hard to argue with avoid doom as an MVP. Our goal is to create a federated large scale cloud starting with academia. The plan is starting with the MOC to create highly prescriptive cloud in a box solutions first deployed at the MOC that can be replicated at multiple academic institutions and then federated into a large scale cloud. So to summarize, Academia is the right first place to focus because it requires massive scale and increasingly rich cloud tools. It's a natural target for collaboration and federation across institutions, and it will enable us to take advantage of a community of professional facilitators who will help users adopt their technologies and bring back the lessons learned to open source communities. But there's more to it than that. Imagine if every class using the cloud being trained was, was being trained using an open cloud. And imagine academic researchers using and innovating cloud technologies all in an open cloud. What might that look like? Just look at a few of the research projects that the MOC has enabled. WorldMap is used by tens of thousands of users around the world. Smart cities projects combine information from multiple cities. Cloud telemetry to identify and study the problems in the cloud new end-to-end -end tracing mechanisms for cloud applications, security analytics on cloud metadata, medical image processing, unikernel research, including a new Linux unikernel that was just developed. More importantly, the MOC has enabled research in the cloud itself, including cloud federation, cloud security, cloud storage research that has made it upstream in Ceph, integration of data repositories with cloud storage, network research, monitoring cloud services, integration of FPGAs in the cloud, ESI that enables physical machines to be rapidly and securely moved between different services. This last ESI capability is being productized by being integrated into Ironic. More about that in the next slide. How has the MOC enabled all this research? Well, it's because cloud researchers have access to real cloud data, access to metadata of the cloud, 
the ability to engage via the MOC with industry partners and the open source community. The NSF funded the Open Cloud Testbed, or OCT, to create a new national testbed for cloud computing research, exposing experimental services to computer science and engineering researchers in the region and adding bump of the wire capable FPGAs. Through the OCT, we're integrating Cloud Lab with the MOC to enable reproducible cloud research. We will be able to move infrastructure between the Open Cloud Testbed, the MOC and the NERC using ESI, enabling the testbed to grow when there is, for example, a conference deadline. Also, we received more than 100 servers from Two Sigma, which we integrated into the Open Cloud Testbed. These servers will be available not only to cloud researchers, but also to open source developers like this community that want to perform deterministic experiments at scale. Open Infrastructure Labs is also a great place to hibernate efforts which cross multiple open source projects and research areas. Some examples include Operate First, making cloud operations as fundamental as functionality upstream. Project Keras, with a goal of improving coordination between compute and storage systems for big data and AI workloads. Project Wenju, which plans to shorten the time it takes for enterprise AI to add value via integrated and simplified development and operations. So to summarize, Open Infra Labs is the place to bridge the gap between OpenStack development and operations. We are starting with the MSC, the New England Research Cloud, and the Open Cloud Testbed, providing a real platform and engagement with research. We will deploy cloud in a box, gain real experience, and when it's ready, work with other institutions to replicate and federate. And what we learn from academia and other cloud operators will be reflected back into cloud in a box releases so that we begin solving our operational problems together. With common code bases, we envision these institutions not only federating, but sharing operational skills and potentially staff. Right now, we have a modest group of engineers working on developing cloud in a box solutions. We have high confidence that this project will be successful, at least on a small scale. However, if this is going to be really successful, as we move forward, we need this community to really engage. The website pointing at all of this lives at openinfralabs.org. Some ways to get involved right now include defining what should be in our cloud in a box offerings. If you're a cloud operator, contribute your best practices and internal software to operate the cloud. Make them part of Open Infra Labs so that others may help you maintain it. If you're a developer, help us to build the mechanisms so we may securely expose all the telemetry associated with the cloud to the research and open source communities. Get involved by supporting Open Infra Labs, by donating hardware, and frankly, helping fund us. More ways to engage will be coming online early next year and include helping your project integrate into a cloud in the box solution integrating your project into our CICD to make your software and operations available to real users. If you're a vendor, get involved to integrate your hardware or software into a cloud in a box solution. We'll be holding a forum, hosting a daily PTG meeting and participating in a number of PTG meetings during the summit. And we look forward to meeting. Thank you, Michael. For a long time, academic research has been very collaborative and taken advantage of massive HPC clusters. In our Massachusetts Green High Performance Computing Center, our collective research computing teams manage 300,000 cores, 80 petabytes of data, and supports 20,000 researchers. Over the years, we have built up the expertise to deliver production HPC services to our researchers with a small number of highly skilled DevOps professionals. HPC is dominated by large numerical simulations, common in chemistry, physics, and engineering, whereas data-driven discovery extends far beyond the STEM areas. Data is arguably the number one asset in the world and requires different computing paradigms like AI and machine learning to extract meaning. At Harvard, big data means collecting and processing upwards of 50 terabytes a day for an individual project. This example comes from our neuroinformatics imaging pipeline within the Center for Brain Science. These are the types of workflows that could be modernized to take full advantage of cloud computing and storage platforms. But leveraging cloud technologies effectively is difficult for those who aren't accustomed to these tools. Hello, my name is Mike Zink. I'm a professor in the ECE department at UMass Amherst and PI of the NSF Open Cloud Testbed, or OCT for short, as well as the Mass Open Cloud. The goal of the Open Cloud Testbed is to create a prototype of a cloud testbed infrastructure 
that can be used by the systems research and the open source communities. By combining the National Science Foundation funded OCT with the MOC and tools from the OpenStack community like Ironic and ESI, we are building ways to move equipment between production clouds and research clouds as the demand needs. This will provide the open source community and researchers to evaluate new cloud technologies at scale. In addition, telemetry data from cloud operations will be made available to researchers, enabling the detailed analysis of new cloud technologies. We are very grateful for hardware donations from Two Sigma Corporation, Intel and Xilinx, which will begin to enable support for open source developers. Hi. My name is Bill Burns and I work at Red Hat and I'm here to talk to you briefly about Operate First. Operate First is a concept that is being adopted at Red Hat and in the open source community. We've been working with the Mass Open Cloud and the Open Cloud Initiative to improve cloud operations by bringing developers into the cloud. The concept is somewhat similar to DevOps and it's about getting code out and executing it in a production cloud environment before release. This allows the developer community to not only vet their functionality, but also experience the operation of their product in a real production cloud environment. The intent is to help them understand operational considerations, allowing them to enhance those capabilities as development continues. Operating first with the Mass Open Cloud and other academia and partners, along with Open Infra Labs, is all about improving the open source cloud and its ability to be managed. Open Infra Labs is centered around getting operators and developers involved together to advance the state of the art of managing open source clouds. And the Operate First initiative is aimed at facil facilitating this cooperation. For more info, plan to attend the Open Infra Labs 101 talk at the Open Infrastructure Summit on Wednesday the 21st at 1.45 p.m. U.S. Eastern Time. And watch the schedule and plan to come to the related PTG sessions. Thank you very much. I hope to see you there. Hi, I'm Heidi Dempsey and I'm from Red Hat. As the world's leading developer and supplier of open source software for enterprise IT, Red Hat really values being able to collaborate on research and development with others. That's why being part of Open Infra Labs is so important to us. Our research group is very involved investigating, prototyping, testing, and experimenting with many different types of hybrid and federated cloud infrastructures. Why should everyone create their own infrastructure from scratch when we can collaborate to skip over stuff people have already tried with good or bad result and find the nuggets of innovative and exciting ideas still out there waiting to be discovered and put into practice? Why guess at what functions and features are important when we can get the word directly from people working as part of Open Infra Labs on real life user stories. Open Infra Labs gives us a perfect opportunity to help streamline how people create clouds, to share what we know with others working on hybrid cloud architecture, and to learn from their successes. Together, we have a chance to focus on how to make the building blocks of cloud design as simple, efficient, and easy to use as possible while still giving people the ability to control their infrastructure all the way down to programmable hardware if they wish. Our focus in this collaboration is not on charging by the minute, but on building day by day the components that will free people from these restrictions, unshackling their creativity. Thank you.